Let us go to the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs chapter 14. Verse 34. Proverbs 14, verse 34. The scripture says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. I read again. Righteousness Exhort a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. If sin brings reproach to anyone, I think it is logical for everyone to want to be righteous. If righteousness exhorts a nation, exhorts individuals, exhorts people, then it is only logical to want to be righteous. We need to understand that there are no two steps to righteousness, but only one way to righteousness. There are no many ways or many methods to righteousness. There is only one way to righteousness. This will be our message for today. Faithfulness versus righteousness. Which should you aspire for? Our message, faithfulness versus righteousness. Which should you aspire for? Let us go to the book of Romans. The book of Romans. We are going to read chapter 3, the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse 10. As it is written, no one is righteous, not even one. The scripture says here, no one is righteous, not even one. Let us go to Romans, chapter 1, verse 17. Romans chapter 1, verse 17, it says, For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith, as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Take a look at that. We have Romans chapter 1, verse 17 saying, The righteous shall live by faith. Then Romans chapter 3, verse 10 saying, No one is righteous. This is not contradictory. This is what our message is for today. Many want to be righteous. Many, they want to be righteous, but they do not know how to go about it. Righteousness is obtained through faith in Christ Jesus. Righteousness is a state of being. It is not something you work for. It is not something you strive for. When you begin to work for righteousness, when you begin to aspire to be righteous, you will find yourself on the path of self-righteousness. Self-righteousness is an abomination to God. It is a sin before God. So if the Bible says no one is righteous, and the Bible also says the righteous shall live by faith, it means there is a secret to being righteous. It means you cannot work for it. It is not something you can work for, because if you work for it, that means you deserve it. It will be given to you as your due. Someone who goes to work, exchanges his time or a time for a salary. You cannot exchange your works for righteousness. The Bible says no one is righteous. That is, it is not something you can achieve or you can strive for. 
The righteous shall live by faith. It means righteousness is obtained through faith. It is a state of being. Faithfulness to God leads to righteousness. Those who were faithful in the Old Testament, their faithfulness was counted to them as righteousness. Let us go to Romans. In the same Romans, chapter 4, same Romans, chapter 4, it says here from verse 3, Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. Remember our message, the two essential elements to salvation? We spoke about believing and repentance. We spoke about how believing is accepting what God has said and faith is putting your belief into action. Abraham, when he was called by God, not only did he believe, but he put his belief into action, which was counted unto him as righteousness. That is faith. If you go back to that book of Romans chapter 3, from verse 22, it says, The righteousness of God through faith in Christ Jesus for all who believe, for there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Righteousness is obtained through faith. If you want to be righteous, you need to understand what is righteousness or what it is to be righteous. To be righteous is simply to be right with God. If you are striving, putting all human efforts to be right with God, you will find yourself always falling. You cannot strive for it, but there is a way to be righteous, which is faithfulness. Those who aspire to be righteous will find themselves being more sinful because they will put themselves in a bubble which we put them into direct conflict with those who are struggling with their faith, with those who are struggling in their spiritual work with Christ Jesus, with those who are still crawling in their faith. But those who aspire to be faithful, when they see others who are struggling, they will pray for them because they also know what kind of challenges they are going through themselves. Aspire for faithfulness. What is faithfulness? Faithfulness is the act of living by faith. As it is said here in Romans 1 verse 17, the righteous shall live by faith. Faithfulness is the act of living by faith. So it means that when you live by faith, you are going to be right with God. Let me explain this. Remember, we spoke about what is faith. Faith is what? Our obedience to God's word in action. Those who are faithful to God are obedient to his word. They put their obedience to God's word into action. That is faithfulness. When you aspire to be faithful to God, you will find yourself being righteous. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as what? Righteousness. Abraham's belief was not a passive belief. It was an active belief. An active belief is faith. Putting what you believe into action, that is faith. That is obeying what God has said. So faith 
is simply put, putting your belief into action or obeying what God said or putting your, our obedience to God's word in action. When you are faithful to God, you know that you have to be loyal to him. You know that you have to be in, to have an integrity. That is, you are going to do what the word says to do in every circumstance. But those who aspire to be righteous, just like the Pharisees, the Pharisees, they aspired to be righteous, not to be faithful. When they were in the congregation, when they were going to the synagogue, you see them praying loudly. You will see them when they are fasting, they will put on a sack of cloth. They will make their face, put ashes on their face so that others will see them that, ah, oh, that person prays a lot. That person is a good Christian. Mm, that, that brother, that sister, mm, I like the way she dressed. When she comes to church, she is always seated at the front. She has a note ready to write. These are outward display, which has nothing to do with the state of the hearts. Those who strive for righteousness always end up putting an outward display of righteousness while living in hypocrisy. Hypocrisy, no matter how cleverly managed, cannot be hidden from Christ Jesus. Those who put on an outward display of righteousness, they are in a bubble which puts them into direct conflict with those who are struggling with their faith. When you see them walking, they always have the biggest Bible. When they walk, they try to form to be holy. When they see a person of the opposite sex, always putting outward display of righteousness, whereas in their hearts, they are far from God. What they do on the outside is not necessarily what they do in the secrets. It is not necessarily what they do behind closed door. Do not aspire to be righteous. Because in your quest to try to be righteous, you are going to have to involve your human efforts. When you're walking the street, no, I don't want to look. No, I don't want to do this. No, I don't want to go there. You begin to put human efforts. As you're putting those human efforts, you find yourself being into direct conflicts. You begin to judge others. You begin to see yourself as if you are better than others. Aspire to be faithful. To live by faith, to be obedient to God's word. This is what leads us to righteousness. The Bible says here, the righteousness of God is what is manifested through faith in Christ Jesus. We become the righteousness of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Faithfulness to God does not begin. On the outside, it begins in the secret place. It begins behind closed door. That is faithfulness. When no one is looking, when no one is observing you, do you still do what God has said in the scriptures? Do you still act on what God has spoken? Do you put your belief into action? Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin brings reproach. Everyone wants to be right with God. You cannot become right with God by putting in an outward display of righteousness. 
You cannot be right with God by trying so much to be righteous. No, I'm not going to do this. No, I'm not going to go there. No, I'm not going to, go, I'm not going to talk to this person. I'm going to walk straight. When, so, when somebody comes to me, I will tell them, please, look at what the Bible says. No. That is an outward display of righteousness. I remember my time in the Sinanga Church of All Nations. We had those who were faithful and those who aspired to be righteous. When they come outside, they will preach powerful sermons. Everybody will be moved. But within our circle, we knew who was who in the secrets. When they come outside, they will pray, hey, in the name of hey, the Bible says, all kind of charisma. Back then, when I was growing in the school, the man of God, Prophet T.V. Joshua, was young. So when he preached, he preached. In the later years, you know, he was getting old, he preached calmly. But back then, when he preached, all what we did was to copy him. And if you look at most of us today, we preach the way he used to preach back then because we were growing under him. So people will come out, all kind of messages, a break in prayer, all kind of manners. And you see them during the week in the church displaying all kind of righteousness, moving like this. Mr. Holy, 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 moving Holy. You, you don't see them in the midst of the opposite sex. They are always holy. You don't see them in the midst of those whom they consider to be sinners. They are always holy, only with their Bible and their MPGs, sermons. But these are the people that in the secret place, we knew what they do. Hypocrisy, no matter how cleverly managed, cannot be hidden from God. Faithfulness to God begins in the secret place. Faithfulness to God leads us to righteousness. How can we consider Noah to be righteous? Whereas in the time of Noah, there was no law. There was no law in the time of Abraham, yet he was righteous. It means that righteousness is not something you can strive for. You cannot begin to say that this morning I'm going to leave. I'm going to, okay, okay. You bring out the Ten Commandments. You begin to choose to enumerate which one you have to do today, which one you have to do tomorrow. No. Abraham did not have this yet. He was counted righteous before God. Why? Because he was faithful. That is, he was obedient to what God was saying to him at every moment. Obeying God's word will lead you to righteousness. Not you striving to appear righteous before men and women. Not you striving to appear what? Righteous before men and women. Aspire to be faithful. Aspire to do what God has said through His Word and by His Spirit. In the book of Matthew 7, verse 3, Jesus says, How are you able to see the speck in the eye of your brother? But you do not notice the log in your own eyes. Those who put on an outward display of righteousness, those who struggle, who try to pretend that they are righteous, this is their pattern. They come out, 
in the meeting, disciple meeting, class meeting, you come out, they begin to point the wrongs of others. This brother, I don't know, he has spirit of lust. This brother, this sister, always seeing the fault in others, but never seeing their own problems. Never seeing the logs in their eyes. Self-righteous people, when they move around in the church, when they move around in the street, they are always judging others, classifying them as sinner. Ah, look at that one. Ah, he's a big sinner. That one mm, is a small sinner. Ah, that one is an, is an uh, up, uh, upcoming sinner. Very soon he's going to become a big sinner. Self-righteousness. When you aspire to be righteous, you will find yourself in the path of self-righteousness. You will begin to judge others for every little mistake they make. When you see those who are struggling with their weakness, you begin to judge them instead of you praying for them. In the book of Matthew, chapter 7, Jesus Christ teaches us not to judge. The Pharisees, they were quick to bring Mary to Jesus. Say, Jesus, this woman is a prostitute. They were pointing. They were saying, we, look at us. We don't engage in all these kind of things. She was caught fornicating, but we don't do these kind of things. Look at her. See, what can you say about this woman? The same way in the, in the, in the synagogue. They bring somebody, they, they bring somebody, they want to fight the person. What can you say about this brother? They brought the woman to Jesus, expecting Jesus Christ to support their, their position so that they can tempt Jesus. And Jesus Christ said to them, If anyone among you is without sin, let him cast the first one. And then they understood. So, mm, this man, this man of wisdom, he has gotten to us. Because they know deep down within themselves, they were not faithful. They were only self-righteous. When you are faithful to God, when you walk in faithfulness, you will walk in a sinless state. What do I mean by this? Not that you will not fall, but each time you fall, God will be there to lift you up. Remember this morning we talked about what? Jesus' forgiveness cleanses all unrighteousness. The Bible says that God said that David was a man after his own heart. But look at the things David did. David murdered a man, another man, to have his wife. This is an, uh, it is an, an, an atrocity. Many of us have not done this. Has God called you a man after his own heart? No, it is because David was faithful to God. Being faithful to God does not mean you will not struggle. Remember, faith is putting our obedience to God's word into action. Sometimes you may fail, not because you do not want to obey, but because your body is just too weak, or because the circumstances around you are just too powerful and you succumb. You may fail, but you are not to remain there. When David learned that what he did was displeasing to God, what did he do? He tore his garments. He began to pray, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to your tender mercies, brought out my transgressions. He prayed, against you, you only have I sinned. Against you, you only have I done this evil. He prayed to God. That was him being faithful. Remember, God is calling you today. Come, 
Now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So God is aware. As you aspire to be faithful to God, you will be faced with challenges. As long as you are in this world, you will find yourself with face constantly with things which are not consistent with God's word. You may stumble, you may fall, but you will not stop being faithful to God. That is, you will not stop living by faith. You will not stop obeying his word. Faithfulness leads us to righteousness. Faithfulness leads us to righteousness. That is, it makes us right with God. That is the way we can achieve righteousness. Not by struggling to be righteous, but by being faithful. We have learned that righteousness is to be right with God, which is achieved through faith in Christ Jesus. Faith is putting our obedience to God's word in action. May Jesus Christ bless this word in the midst of your hearts in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it is time for prayers. 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 Faithfulness versus righteousness. What should you aspire for? This is not to say that it is impossible to live in righteousness. No, no, no. This is to say to live in righteousness, you must be faithful to God. Because righteousness is not something you can work for. It is not a due. It is not something you can bargain for. This is why God chooses grace rather than works. Because if God chose works, hmm, the world will be filled with so many self-righteous people. They will come out and say, look at me. I am blessed today because I pray five times a day because I don't live like you sinners. They begin to work like this. Look at me. Today, I'm a man of God because I'm righteous. I don't live in the counsel of the ungodly. They begin to cry themselves like this. If God has chosen work rather than grace, there will be no room for people like me. The battle we would have been for the strongest. The race for the fastest. The pulpit would have been for those with swiftness of tongue, eloquence of speech. I thank Lord Jesus, for by grace, I am able to stand here to do the works of my Father. God bless you.